so in previous video we explained what all topics we are going to cover on day one of Oracle Fusion Middleware Administration Training. In this video, we are going to explain topics which we cover on day two of Oracle Fusion Middleware Training, which covers WebLogic, Oracle HTTP Server, Oracle SOA Suite, OBIE, Web Center, and overview of Oracle Identity Nexus Management including installation, configuration, integration, troubleshooting, deployment of application, high availability, disaster recovery, clustering, SSL, and various day-to-day -day operations which you do on Oracle Fusion Middleware. In this video, we are going to see what all topics we are going to cover on day two of Oracle Fusion Middleware Workshop. So the first topic we are going to cover on day two is Oracle WebLogic Server. The Oracle WebLogic Server is the most important component in Oracle Fusion Middleware. So we are going to cover this in detail. Then we are going to cover domain, admin and manage server of WebLogic. So domain is the one which binds uh, the entire Oracle WebLogic Server deployment. We are going to cover domain and then we are going to cover two servers or two different type of servers which is admin server and managed server on Oracle WebLogic. Then we are going to look at Oracle WebLogic console which is um, a graphical user interface to manage your Oracle WebLogic domain. So you can create your manage servers, you can deploy your applications, you can do entire management from WebLogic console that we're going to cover on day two. Then we are going to cover node manager, which is a utility that runs on a, on a machine to control your entire domain remotely. So let's suppose you're trying to start a server from a WebLogic console, you will need node manager. If you're deploying an application, uh, from a, from a command line, you need node manager. So we are going to cover node manager. Then we are going to cover data sources in WebLogic. So what a data source is, on your application gets deployed on WebLogic server, but then data needs to be stored in the database. So the connectivity of your WebLogic server or the application server to the database is a data source. The database could be a single instance Oracle database, or it could be a rack, which is two or more instances of database for high availability. So you have in WebLogic server something called as a data source, and you have multi data source. So the multi data source is for high availability or for, for connectivity to the rack database. Then we are go also going to cover grid link which is another way or the latest way of integrating or configuring connectivity from your WebLogic server, Oracle Rack database. From a hands-on point of view, we are going to install and configure Oracle WebLogic server so that you are going to connect remotely to our servers. Then you will install Oracle WebLogic server, 11G version, and you will also create this domain and configure admin and manage server on our servers remotely. So we're going to do hands-on. We're also going to cover how to start and stop a WebLogic admin server or manage server. And you're going to stop and start remotely uh, by connecting to your server. So each trainee will get a dedicated machine to practice. There are multiple ways in which you can start and stop a WebLogic server, like from a command line or from a WebLogic console. So we are going to cover those as a part of hands-on. So we are also going to cover file system and log files as a part of hands-on. So file system, after installing the WebLogic server and creating a domain for WebLogic server, we are going to see the various homes which we discussed on day one. Where is my WebLogic home? Where is my middleware home? Where is my domain home? And various directories or files which are important for 
a Fusion Middleware Administrator to know. We're also going to cover the log file location and this and in my view is the most important topic or most important location which you need to know because when you're troubleshooting any problem in Fusion Middleware deployment or support you need to know where those log files go so you can review the log file and identify the root cause of the problem fix the problem and finally we are going to create a managed server from the weblogic console as a part of hands-on exercise for day two so all the hands-on uh, you're going to do remotely on our servers we're going to give a dedicated machine for each trainee and they will be working on their own virtualized machine uh, we we the machines which are going to do get is on Linux so if you don't have a basic Linux knowledge tell us in advance and we'll give you the basic pointers or walk you through about the basic Linux commands the reason why we do on Linux is because a lot of enterprise customers whom we support and we implement they run their weblogic server or Oracle fusion middleware on Linux or Unix so just to recap on what we cover on day two we cover weblogic server overview we cover weblogic domain admin and manage server we are going to cover weblogic console which is graphical user interface to manage your weblogic domain from a GUI or graphical user interface we are going to cover node manager then data sources in weblogic which is connectivity from weblogic server to the databases we are going to do a hands-on remotely on our servers you will get connection details you will be installing and configuring weblogic server then we also cover start and stop of weblogic server and uh, the last two points is review of file system and the log file location and finally we are going to create a managed server from console if you want to do more activities like creating a data source you can create when you when we give you a machine we also pre-install a database for you so that if you want to do a connectivity test from weblogic server to the database you can do that